you, with the hustle up, right? We were on the podcast, and the biggest thing that kept resonating with me today when I was on the podcast is why did I start? And they asked me that, and I didn't really have the best answer at the time, but as I've thought about it more and more throughout the day, my biggest thing was I saw everybody in college talking about, oh, they wanted to invest in this and that. You know, there were some IMLs or like multiple, like what was like the law thing. Anyways, they were investing hundreds of dollars and stuff. And to myself, I kept thinking, well, why don't I invest in myself? I'm the only variable that I can control ever. You can't control the weather. You can't control if your car breaks down. The only variable you can control is yourself. Give it up for Dawson Gant. Dawson Gant, make some noise. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So uh, first and foremost, uh, like you said, my name is Dawson Gant. Um, I'm based out of North Carolina. I run three real estate companies that all work in, in uh, basically in synchronicity with each other. Um, those are GNA Investments, Offer Triad, and United Offer. Uh, United Offer is our national brand. Um, but before we get in that, I wanted to thank uh, Hess and uh, Clint for inviting us out here. Um, my biggest thing tonight is to just show you guys what a 21 year old can do. I, I didn't have any mommy and daddy handouts. I didn't have a horror story either. I just lived a very normal life up until college. Um, and in four years, we've been able to take uh, literally $3,000 that I got for graduation to multiple seven figure companies that, you know, some companies are even producing seven figures in one month. So um, I want to just start out with that. That's a little bit about where I started and kind of go into how I started. Um, and then, you know, show you how anybody in this room can do it. Actually, I've got a couple guys in this room um, that worked with me and are now running very, very successful wholesale Make companies. some noise if Dawson Gant brought you here. So yeah, I uh, run a wholesale company and basically what that is, is we contact sellers of property. So like your mom, your grandma, anybody that owns a property and we ask them if they want to sell, right? So we may go to that seller and say, hey, I want to buy your house for 50,000, right? And then we're going to turn around to an investor like myself now or someone that's flipping properties and say, hey, I've got this really, really good deal. Let me sell it to you for 60, right? So we do a couple paperwork, two contracts basically, and we take that in the middle. So for that deal, it's 10 grand. Um, so I started that in college. I was cold calling people uh, at, at 17. I couldn't even sign a contract legally or I would, it's not even void, it'd be voidable. Um, so I started that in college. I was cold calling in the dorms, making three, 400 calls a week. And it took me eight months to get my first check, right? So I was running track at A&T up in North Carolina. I got my first check. I immediately reinvested it. Um, and then three short years later, you know, we just had a deal closed today that was a $25,000 assignment. I never saw the property. It was down in Texas. Um, and we're going to have like $100,000 a week next week. So we were able to scale it really, really quick. Um, and I've been super blessed. That this is working my bad. Um, blessed at my age to be able to do this. Um, with no money, so I didn't start with any big. Is it good now? Okay, cool. I didn't start with any. Let, let me get another mic. Sorry, my, my voice isn't uh, loud enough to do that. But yeah, so we started with no money or credit. That's the biggest thing I wanted to say. Um, and now we're flipping properties uh, left and right. We closed on two this week that we're going to be flipping. I'm closing on two more Monday. Um, and we're going to continue to scale it. I wanted to really, with the hustle up, right, we were on the podcast. And the biggest thing that kept resonating with me today when I was on the podcast is, why did I start? And they asked me that. And I didn't really have the best answer at the time. but as I've thought about it more and more throughout the day, my biggest thing was I saw everybody in college talking about, oh, they wanted to invest in this and that. You know, there were some IMLs or like multiple, like what was like the law thing. Anyways, they were investing hundreds of dollars and stuff. And to myself, I kept thinking, well, why don't I invest in myself? I'm the only variable that I can control ever. You can't control the weather. You can't control if your car breaks down. The only variable you can control is yourself. 
So I didn't have that great answer on the podcast, but as I thought about it more today, I just kept thinking about that. Like I could control if I went to that party, I could control if I went and got drunk with my friends, and I could also control my, myself making cold calls in the dorm room when my buddy was asleep, because we were marketing in California then, so I was trying to get a deal wherever I could. So that was the only thing I could control, and I was blessed enough to have that epiphany at such a young age to be able to start young and be where I'm at today at 21. So. Anybody out here trying to get started, that's the only thing you can control is when you start. And the big motto of Hustle Up is create the life you want to live. So you can go out and research this and get started and start making money in two, three weeks. So it was able to open up a lot of doors for me to give back um, as well as you know, help people get started in the business. I was able to pay my grandparents' mortgage off like last month, so it was a huge deal for me. Um, and we're now starting to buy rentals. Appreciate it. So, you know, from a kid that, you know, my mom was a nurse, my dad was in sales to, you know, owning rentals, doing flips, and being so successful in real estate, it was really kind of all inspiring to me. I, I wake up every day, I just bought an R8 um, for like 150 grand, and I get in the car and I'm like, man, I created this. I had help and I leveraged other people's experience, but I was able to create it by myself um, and, you know, leverage the work ethic, leverage the work ethic of others. And um, now our business is almost 100% virtual. So I've got my main acquisition got Brandon, another Brandon in the purple shirt. He runs all the day-to-day -day operations. But everything else is based on virtual assistance out in the Philippines and um, Costa Rica and Guatemala. So we run our business completely, completely virtual other than me and him. And we're able to convince sellers to sell properties to us. We're able to provide a solution to those sellers and then turn around and make a little bit of money. Um, and we've always been able to put people first. So with that being said, I wanted to go a little bit in how, what wholesale is and how anyone in this room can get started so that you can take something and apply it if that's what you want to do. I, I think the guys with the e-commerce taught you guys something you could go do yourself as well. So what you need to do if you're looking to wholesale, if you're looking to get in real estate and you don't have you know, credit, you don't have someone willing to back you, you know, and get money from mom and dad alone or, or money from a family member, which if you do, congratulations, that's awesome. But if you were like me and you didn't have that, you can start finding deals. You can find guys like me. There's a couple other flippers in the room. Um, I know Clinton then will flip some houses. I know Jock right there will flip some houses in the Atlanta area. You can start finding good deals from them if that's being driving around and, and contacting the, the owners or you know, pulling data and stuff like that. We can go into more of that in the Q&A. You can find deals. You can give them to a guy like this in the room and sell it and make a profit. And that could be your seed money for your business, right? So let's say you want to wholesale for a year and the end goal is to own property or flip or start your music career, start anything. This can be the vehicle for anyone in this room to make an extra 10, 20, $100,000 a month and to start living the life you desire. So that's all I had to say about wholesaling. We can open up for question and answer if you guys want. Yeah, hey, all real estate people in here, let's go. Let's bring the questions. This is a 21-year-old seven-digit earner who does real estate. He's got the knowledge. He's got the experience. He's young. You can relate to him. Ask him the questions. Make some noise for him. Let's go. For somebody that's like doing deals consistently mm -hmm. and has a few people on the team, do you think how necessary is branding like? Is branding as necessary as you think it is? No, I, I, for the wholesale side of things, it's right. not. For the flip company, you, you're, you want to be a home market type of uh, brand. But for the wholesale, like I said, we have three companies right. and we've gone national. So we're in Texas, we're in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Uh, we were in Atlanta, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. So you don't necessarily have to have a brand, mm -hmm. but it makes things easier, right? So how right. hard is it to create a logo? Right. Um, create something that you know resonates with the seller, right? So okay. Offer Triad is one of our markets, the Triad market. Mm -hmm. And when the seller hears that, they don't think of anything else than they're getting an offer for their house in the triad. So it okay. does help. Is it crucial? No. But as you're go starting to build, I would say that's something I want to check off the, you know, right. the checklist. Right. Um, but I would say as you're building, implementation of scaling is hiring. So the, the number okay. one thing to do is hire people. They can, maybe you can do the job the best, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you can hire someone that can do 90% as good as you, and you can put that across 10 people, you're now able to do 900% more than what you could do by yourself. So okay. I've been very blessed to have good people around me and have really, really solid uh, training right. and being able to train my virtual people that you know okay. 
guys in the Philippines making $200 a week are, are bringing in the company eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a month. So okay. I say if you're trying to scale, the first thing is hiring good people. Right. And that's a process in itself. So in-house hiring before um, virtual hiring? So I've done it both ways, right? I started the company. Um, when we first started scaling the first time, I had 20 right. employees that were American-based. Since then, we had a pretty large office. Mm -hmm. We're down to like three, right? Me, Brandon, and we have a guy named Brian who sells all our properties. The rest, we have close to 40 Filipino uh, or Guatemalan, anywhere you want, virtual assistants. Okay. And we have sales leaders in each side of that. So like we have a core team of 10, and then the rest are like cold callers, uh, follow up and stuff like that. So okay. you can do it either way you want, but um, you don't want to have that you know, overhead of, of people in America unless you can support it, right? So when I was so deep, I was paying a base of $1,000 to each American plus commission. So before I even sold a deal or before I even flipped a house, I was already losing 20 grand before I marketed, before I paid the rent, anything like that. So for us, virtual has been able to give me and the people that are in America the life they want to live by traveling and stuff like that because we don't have to be tied down to one office. If I had some extra capital on hand and wanted to invest in real estate and came to you, how would I get involved with you uh, to play with my money? Right. So I always ask people when they come to me and they say, hey, Dawson, I have 50, 100,000, half a million dollars, what their end game is, right? So I provide two or three ways that people can invest with me. And if you don't want to invest with me, that's great. I still want to leave you with something tonight to go do your own thing, right? So a lot of guys will come to me and say, hey, Dawson, like I said, I got 50 grand. Um, what can you do for me? So we'll, we'll take that money and fund a flip with that and provide a return to our investors on a yearly basis that gets paid out whenever we finish the flip. So if we buy a flip today, we finish it in 30 days, they'll get a percentage of their money um, in interest paid back plus their whole initial investment which is backed by you know, the asset that we're getting 50 cents on the dollar. So their, their, their uh, investment is very, very protected by an asset that we got for 50 grand that's worth 100, that if you know, we did mess up, they could turn around and sell and still come out okay, right? So we back all of our, our, of our investments with a hard asset. Um, so that's the number one way you can invest with me. If you're not looking to invest with somebody and you wanna go do your own thing, it just, it's all your end goal, right? You can start a wholesale company, you can start flipping, or you can start renting. Um, you know, if you already have income that's coming in, you don't really need a wholesale company as your vehicle if you make good money. You want to start buying rentals, or that's what I want to do, right? I'm buying rentals to provide the life in 10 years that I want to live, right? So if I can buy a rental this month that gives me 500 bucks, that's a car payment. If I can buy another rental next month that gives me 1,000 in profit, you know, it just starts to um, accumulate over time. So, you know, with 50 grand, you could go buy a rental and rehab it and then refinance it and get your money back and do that, you know, it's called the Burr strategy. Um, you can rinse and repeat that as many times as you want and scale it with the capital you have. Um, so that's for a long-term play. If you're trying to do short-term because the market's crazy right now, you can start flipping. Um, if you're gonna start flipping, obviously, you know, take the necessary precautions, get a good general contractor on your side, uh, you know, maybe go up under someone that's already flipping so you don't waste any money. But uh, you know that provides quick cash in 60 to 90 days, and a typical flip profit for us is 40 grand. Um, and we've got another one we're going to make about 150 thousand in uh, three months. So flip profit's really good because you got to have a little bit of uh, capital to get started. Yep. Hello, hello, hello. Oh shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hello. It's a terrible it mic. Half the time, half the time. Are there any downsides to into? Hey, hey, is there any downside to getting? Hello, hello. Dude, Is there any downside to getting into So, so you're trying. You're saying, is there any downside in getting to? A, physically flipping the houses where you buy them and repair them and sell them without any capital? Yes, you're, I think you're saying you first started, you didn't necessarily have So wholesale, so we, ho so wholesale real estate, and I may not have explained that, is not necessarily flipping the house, you're flipping a piece of paper. So you're not buying the house, like it's a, for example, you have a house, you say Dawson, I'll sell it to you for 50,000, and I know Jock over here will buy it from me for 60, I assign my rights to him for the $10,000 difference. Um, there's really no downside. It, it, it is a business, so you're going to have to run it. Um, there's some guys that are able to do one or two deals a month, and that's okay. Um, and that's all they want to do, you know, make five, 10, 20 grand extra a month. But if you're wanting to scale it, it is a full blown business. So, you know, 
it takes a little bit of time. It took us a year to really ramp up and start doing the 10 or 15 deals a month that we're doing right now. So I, I wouldn't say there's a downside. It's just your time investment. Um, and it's not zero dollars, right? You're going to spend money either driving for dollars with gas. You're going to spend money for marketing. You're going to spend money for like I, I spend money in the business, but it's very, very small investment. And there's really no risk because you're not buying the house and you buy the house you pull. So like I had a house that flooded today. I get a phone call. I'm down in Atlanta. I bought it last week. It flooded. So I'm taking on that risk because I purchased it and I'm flipping it. But as a wholesaler, you're not taking on any risk as buying the asset. So no, there's no real um, risk in it. It's just the time and the sweat equity you would put up and the little bit of money. Yeah. So we, we really, really vet our buyers and they put down what's called non-refundable due diligence money. So before I even signed a contract with him, he's gonna put 10 grand down of hard earned money, right? Um, and typically if they put down $10,000 cash, they're pretty interested in buying the property. We do set the realistic expectations with the seller like, hey, I'm bringing in funding partners, they're gonna help me buy this. And there is a chance that it may not get sold, but I'm gonna do everything that I can to get my funding partners to give me the green light. And we put contingencies in our contract to say, hey, we got our funding partners in. It was a little bit more work than what we're, we're, we were thinking initially. Um, so here we can do one of two things. We can pull out of the contract. We'll put you with a realtor. We'll put you with somebody else that we think can help you. Or we can get a five, ten thousand dollars price reduction, um, and we'll go ahead and move forward. We do have those contingencies in the contract to protect ourselves. But I do not recommend just going and putting stuff under contract and then essentially fucking over the seller because that's not how you do good business. So. You know, I would want to be very sure about myself and talk to a realtor and be like, hey, what do you think this thing is worth? What do you think I can sell it for? So you know that from jump and you're not putting stuff under contract for way higher than what they should be. Um, and now I'm in the position where I will buy every deal I put under contract if we don't wholesale it. I don't want to buy it unless I can make thir 3x what my wholesale fee would be, but I'll do it because I'm not going to put my name and my brand on the line. And, you know, these sellers are distressed. They might be in foreclosure, tax. Um, or they just really need to sell the property. So I'm not going to put them in a position where I made them a promise and I can't fulfill it. And that's just how you run your business. I don't know. My mic's going to... Are there any more questions? Any more questions? Hello? All right, we got a few more questions. Hold on. You got questions over here? My mic's not. Oh, it's working now. Uh, someone, can this be done locally? Mm -hmm. For example, if someone wants to invest in their neighborhood, right? To start with. with so you're asking, can wholesaling and flipping be done locally, or be done locally with me? But, yeah, I mean, if if you have the information. Uh huh. For the Hello. Yeah, so we'll, I'll invest in certain... For the person that's investing with you, yeah. with your help, can do it locally in their neighborhood where we can go walk into the property anywhere and make sure that the location and the price, the neighborhood... So you're saying how do you protect your investment, basically? If I'm saying, hey, I have this deal in Texas and you've never been to Texas. Yeah, actually that and uh, uh, being local. And being part of it. So I, I'll i buy a deal anywhere. We've done deals in California. We've done deals in North Dakota. Um, if I have a lender that wants to invest in that area and I don't want to do it I, and, and I make a case like, hey, this market's not that good. We're not going to get the returns we could get in another market. And they're still very like, hey, I really want to invest in Atlanta. I have the connection to put you with someone I trust that's doing the business as well and just let you guys do the thing together. Um, but we invest in Atlanta uh, on the outskirts of Atlanta anyways. I always just give an offering memorandum when they see a deal. So you're going to get comps from a realtor that's a licensed realtor saying, hey, I can sell this property when it's fixed for X amount. You're going to get an appraisal. You're going to get um, our scope of work saying, hey, this is what we plan to do on the property. So you're going to have a lot of tools to be able to invest anywhere. And obviously, it's a lot more easy on my end and your end if I can invest where I'm comfortable. But that's not to say that, you know, for the right situation, I'm not open to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. 100%. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. So we sell to other investors all the time. Um, and we'll invest with investors in their local area. We just have them on a... Yeah, yeah. 100%. So you'll get with my dispo guy who sells our deals and does the lending part. And he'll, he'll keep you in mind. So let's say you say, hey, I only want to buy in this zip code or I won't only want to invest in this area. When we get a deal, we'll give you a call and say, hey, we've got this deal three doors down. Go take a look at it. So like REO, yeah, we, I I would, right, yeah, you can do that too, I mean, we we deal with foreclosures and REO, it's not necessarily safer, they're all deals, Um, we just find more deals, so we're looking at 150 properties a week, and we only buy 5 to 15 of those, so we're uber selective of what we buy, and we're only buying deals that from my experience and the experience of my network around me, that we can make a feasible enough profit to protect you as the investor and protect our company. But yeah, you can do it anyway. You can have a realtor work for you as well. 100%. Yep. Yeah. All so right, yes. we got one more question. Kyle Whitaker, where you at? Oh, Jaquez. Please quiet, yeah, come on, yeah. you can project. All right, so what's, let's say I'm an 18 year old and I'm gonna make like ten thousand dollars within the next thirty days. Right? right. So where would you recommend me starting if I had no money, absolutely all? No money. You have a car and a cell phone. Yeah. Okay, so everybody can go down, download an app called the Driving for Dollars app. You can drive in the nice neighborhoods. Uh, for Atlanta, I'd probably stay up under a half a million dollars, and you can find the worst house in the best neighborhood. That Driving for Dollar app is gonna help you for a little bit more. There's obviously ways to do it cheaper, but when you're first starting out couple dollars will give you the information for the seller. You're going to reach out to that seller. You're going to say, hey, I see your property on 123 Main Street. Have you, I see it's a little messed up. I see that it may need some work. Have you considered selling it? You're probably going to do 100 of those, and one person is going to say yes, and one person is going to negotiate a price that works for you and your end flipper, and you're going to assign that deal. I think when we were in Atlanta, our average assignment fee was about 25 grand. So if you're in the Atlanta market, your first deal could be 25 grand. Personally, my first deal was $1,800, and it only paid for the credit card that I was running Driving for Dollar app on. But that's probably the number one way to get your first deal um, and then scale. So if you're in the area, Jock's another wholesaler that's killing it. I mentored him in February. I think what you guys have, 17 deals on the board right now? So if you're in the area, I'd say get with him and talk to him about possibly working with him and finding a deal for him. He'll cut you a you know a check for that, and you got your first deal. Now you can reinvest that into a, your own marketing and start your own company. Guys, give it up for Dawson Gant. Thank you, guys.